Hi, welcome everybody. It's Mike Newton down here at Lear the Golf Club. A little bit of a different video for you here. Maybe one just to possibly explain a little bit about strong lofts on these more modern game improvement irons. Now, getting a lot of comments on my videos here, and obviously, particularly the, the M4 video I've just done, in terms of you know just how ridiculously strong lofted these clubs are, and the base of the not a seven iron, they're a six iron or even a five iron. Um, as the old loss would see uh, many years ago. So maybe just, I'm, I'm not, this isn't any, by any, way, any means a defense of a brand. I'm gonna use TaylorMade as an example, but this is basically across the board of all the manufacturers who make game improvement irons. You'll see all the losses are getting stronger. You know, seven irons typically 28 and a half degree to 30 degree. They're in that strong sort of bracket. So I'm not just, I'm not defending um, well, I am in a little bit in a way, but I just maybe want to paint the bigger pictures to possibly why these lofts are what they are. Uh, it's not all about sort of trying to pull the wool over your eyes and, and instead of it being a seven, it's a six iron. Um, there's a little bit more to that, and that's maybe what I just want to sort of explain a little bit here. So I'm just going to use TaylorMade as an example uh, because TaylorMade, I think for me, are very much talked about in terms of strong lofts. I think these are the ones to really start it all off and then everybody's sort of followed in a way. So spend a little bit of time with the TaylorMade tech guys, but also other brands as well. So this, again, not just TaylorMade, but other brands. Um, spend a little bit of time with them and the tech guys in terms of how, and what they're doing with the club and obviously bringing out new irons each year and how they're evolving these irons and changing it to try and increase performance. Obviously for you golfers out there to hit longer golf shots, obviously hit straighter golf shots and add the enjoyment to the game. So. For example, again, here, this is an example. I'm going to use the M4 iron here. So, um, obviously, what again, all manufacturers are doing here is they're playing around with weight. Okay, um, the, the saving weight here, the stripping weight down uh, from certain areas, replacing it in the position of the head. So, the, the, the taking and saving this weight, they're not dis, dis, discarding it and chucking it away. They're sort of banking it and then re-adding it into other parts of the club head as they test these clubs before obviously launching them to the market. And as they're playing around with this weight, they're obviously getting to a performance where they can see really miss hits now, because we all know middle of the club face were pretty much maxed out here. Um, and there's obviously some limits there set by the RNA. So we're looking very much at off center hits here. So this weight saving, the bank that weight, they then add it in other parts of the club head to really try and help with reduce of twisting, which is the MOI, keeping ball speed up across the face. At the same time, they're really pushing boundaries on face thickness. Now, again, there's limits on face thickness and there's a limit of, of how quick a ball can, can come off a club face. Um, you know, there's a limit there. They can't exceed that limit. So that's where, again, the, the sweet spot, the, the CG placement in that club head, uh, the middle of the club strike is at its max in a way, I would say. You know, somebody out there may sort of argue there's, there's a bit more out there, but I very much doubt it. I think all brands are pushed up to that max there. But what they're now doing is obviously if you hit a toe or a heel strike, that ball will not come off the club face as quick. So what, the, again, through face thickness, repositioning weight, strengthening faces, and trying to get mass more back out into that golf ball, the off center hits where you'd see that drop off and ball speed, the, the edge in this quicker and quicker as they're playing around with materials, with thicknesses, and really pushing boundaries on what this technology can do. So, what I've been told, and this is, again, it's just tailor-made, this is several companies here. What I've been told is that as they're playing around with the CG and this sort of face is here, is the, the ball launches too high, okay? So it comes off fast, but it launches really, really high. So what I've been told, the last part of the element is then what lofted this set to get this launched golf ball back to its what it should be for that particular iron. So say a seven iron, whatever that should be around that, I would say that 18, 19 sort of degree mark uh, with a seven iron. Again, every golf is different, how they deliver the club, what dynamic loft they deliver, but that's that's different from person to person. Um, but I'll say, things being equal in a robot, ball roughly should come out around that sort of 18, 19 sort of degree mark. Um, and obviously without that stronger loft, this ball will probably launch well into the twenties. Okay, so to get it back down, the lofts have gone stronger. So my argument would be, because everybody would say, well, it's not seven iron, it's a six iron, that's why it goes further, okay? Yeah, a little bit, but at the same time, my, my return to that would be, we see this through daily fittings here, why does a 28 degree seven iron, for instance, launch at the same angle 
as say other other clubs that are 32, 30 degrees. You know, how how is that possible? If it's stronger, it's got to come out lower, surely. Okay. But again, I think with the CG placement and the, and the, again these game improvement irons are really pushing boundaries. When you get in that player's irons, which you generally see that 33, 34, maybe even 35 degree mark, there's not a lot else they can do with the heads. That bladey head, there's a little bit of subtle changes, a little bit of tungsten chucked in there just to help a little bit. But that's really it. There's not a lot else they can sort of do with those sort of technology. But where the game improvement irons, you can see loads of tungsten going in, face slots going in, for instance, with Tailmed, again, as an example. Uh, rib core technology, and obviously Callaway's got their own technology, which is fairly sort of sim similar. You know, Ping will have theirs, and you'll see all these lofts get stronger. But the launches are still at that normal sort of uh, flight that we see at a seven iron. So it's a, it's a really interesting one, to be honest. And I'm, 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 I'm gonna, obviously I will get a load of questions and a load of uh, possible stick now for doing this video. But you know, I'm, I'm gonna start a little bit of a conversation here as to what your thoughts are. And I think for me, it's a shame that the golf brands don't maybe push and explain all that. And there is a lot of explanation, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video. But why they don't maybe explain that as good as they can, they just, sometimes you look on the website, you see the, the spec of them, you see a 7-iron at 28 degrees loft, you think, well, that's just a 6-iron, that's going to go for, that's cheat. That's a cheat stick, okay? And to be fair, these clubs are getting in that way, you know, some of them are so easy to hit now, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's hitting golfers that, they're not trying to pull wool over their eyes, they're trying to help golfers hit better golf shots than, than they can, you know? You know, technology's helping, um, making it more forgiving on the miss hits because not everybody hits the middle of the golf club and they're just making it uh, easier for golfers and more enjoyable and it's interesting to see even the best players in the world okay they don't play maybe m3 but they might do in the long iron you know you see a lot of the p790s in the in a long iron i think rose is using one i think justin johnson uses one you know and they might even put m3 in as a two iron option possibly on a lynx golf course maybe in the open um they're going to use that technology you know, they will tweak it to their specifications, but they, they'll, they'll use that technology and they'll use that forgiveness to their advantage. So why not you guys? So again, it's an interesting video. Do comment down below. I'm going to get a lot of stick probably for doing this, but you know, it's just something, I just maybe want to put my spin on it as a, as a fitter, as well as a coach, um, and obviously doing daily fits with different lofted seven irons, which is getting tougher nowadays because obviously so, so many different lofts here. Um, but how the launch stays quite quite similar. It's an interesting one. You know, for me, I think there's a lot more to it than maybe just trying to pull the wool over your eyes and make it six iron and stamp a seven iron on the bottom of the golf club. But you know, you guys comment down below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this one. Okay, um, so yeah, do comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts and uh, do hit that subscribe button and hopefully catch up with you all very soon.